Hi, Catherine. You have to, yeah, good. I think I, did I unmute myself? Yeah, you're doing a good job. Okay. This is just a different perspective, but in the personal history, the personal story, a lot of my personal history is hilarious. It's not sad. A lot of it isn't sad. So my little dilemma is letting go of these stories that would make people laugh. It's just a different perspective. Okay. And it's not something I'm crying about, but it's just a little different because it seems like a lot of the stories that people have are sad ones and stuff like that. And some lines just that I, uh, a little bit sad about letting go of some of these hilarious stories, but I'm doing it. It's a conscious, consistent effort. I catch myself in, so I'm doing it right this minute, aren't I? <laughs> but that's it. Okay. All right. Wasn't really a question. I'm just sharing, really. I guess. Right. Great. Thanks. Thank you for sharing. Hi, Candice. Good, thank you. So you wanted me to talk about blame. So I, we didn't talk about it, so I wasn't exactly sure. Is it self-blame or blaming other people? So maybe you want to uh, tell us um, no. whether we covered and answered your question or not. It was blaming other people. Blaming other people. How you just become aware of how many people talk about who did what to them, you know? Right. <laughs> right. So I just wanted to know what your, you know, take on that was. And I love how you talked about its responsibility and its evolution, you know, getting over the blaming. So I think you answered it well. Well, thank you. And thanks for bringing it up. I appreciate it. Sure. <laughs> the um, yeah, it's everything is a change of perspective. So you shift your perspective. So let's say your perspective is that someone is doing you wrong, and now you're shifting that perspective on whatever someone did to you that appears to be wrong. That person was a part of your contract in this life. And they came to play the part to for you to learn what you had to learn from them. I mean, we're here in the dimension, third dimension. Obviously, if the maker existence wanted everything to be peaches and cream, then we would be in this cel celestial state and it's all angels and everything's lovey-dovey and... And there would have never been anything bad happen. Nobody would be tortured. Nobody would be beat. Nobody would be cheated. None of these things would ever happen. So then everything was good. And obvious, I mean, and that's not the case, obviously. So if it's not the case, then, then what is it that life is trying to show to us? What is it that we need to figure out that things are not that way? That's our, my, our idea of everything to be lovey-dovey and great all the time. But that's not our experience. None of us have experienced that all the time. So then, isn't that time for us to just shift and look at it differently look at it like how about if I look at it from this point of view that okay I'm here whether I like it or I not whether I've decided to come to this life or not for whatever reason I'm here I can't be anywhere else and this is the life I'm living 
Maybe I have an opportunity to terminate myself, pick up the gun and shoot myself, or take some pills and die. But other than that, I'm here in this life, whether that's it. Now, how do I want to live it? Where do I want my attention to be? Do I have the tools to shift my attention and look at it differently, or I don't? A lot of people, maybe they don't have the tools or the know-how or the consciousness. But somehow, us, this community, we have that opportunity and we have come together. So why don't we give it a try? What do I have to lose? What would I lose if I don't try? If I try, what would I lose? What's going to happen to me? I've done this other thing forever. Why don't I try something different and see what happens? Is that going to bring some peace to me? Is that going to shift my view? Is life going to be easier for me if I shift my perspective? Is it making any sense to you guys? Connie. Okay, um, go ahead. Hi, Connie. When you are in a relationship, Hi. Hi. When you have a, a, a friendship to um, your friend, uh, for example, and you um, find it difficult to stay in it, and you want to uh, end it, how can how can I know that it's not because I want to get rid of the mirror she shows me? So let me see. I, I'm not quite sure if I understand. So you're in a relationship with somebody, and it's not. Yeah, it's a friendship. It's not a relationship. It's a it's a friendship. Yeah, relationship, and, friendship, whatever. Uh, you're you're in uh, a friendship relationship. You're you're friends with someone, and then then the friendship is not serving you anymore. Correct. Exactly. And so, yeah. what is the question? How do you get out of it? No, not how do I get out of it, but how can I know it's time to get out of it? Because it it can be because I'm too. Um, I want to be uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be nice. You want to be the good girl. Well, go back to your conditioning. So, you've been conditioned in your childhood that you have to be a Miss Goody Two-Shoe, you have to be nice. You should never do anything to hurt anyone. 